Okay, <coughs> let's call them the session to order. There's a session on, um, on the nuclear fusion predicted by Adroni Mechanics. Uh, you should know um, that uh, the Adroni Mechanics was conceived by contract with the Department of Energy since uh, 1978 to develop new forms of energy with particular reference to new fusion. Everything that we have done, mathematically, physically, experimentally, as a final aim, new clean energy, because that is the, what is absolutely mandatory for mankind. All our studies in nuclear physics, I'm not a nuclear physicist, it was done, for the, everything that we did, mathematically, physically, theoretically, experimentally, is aimed at what will be presented today. Now, the, the status is essentially the following, that we have indeed established beyond credible doubt. There are doubts, but they are political, uh, and, uh, and of course, they, these ways they are not scientific. But we have established beyond credible doubt the existence of nuclear fusion that, um, that, that do not release harm, uh, harmful radiation, such as neutrons, protons, and so on, no harmful ra radiation, and leave no radioactive waste. The principle set um, established in 1978 is, uh, is, is elementary. They uh, take, for instance, the, 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 this, the older theory will be presented by Professor Kai Wei. That's why I will, will show no, no equations, because he's the expert now, best expert in, in this field. But the concept is elementary. Take the deuterium, 2, and take carbon, 12. Now, then, then look at the spins and the parity and all those super, crazy super selection rules. Then uh, in the carbon-12 and the deuterium can indeed synthesize into the neutron. If they synthesize into the neutron, there is no possibility whatsoever of any the radiation. None. None. Where is radiation coming from? And now, and suppose the equipment that you will see the, does not synthesize the, 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 the nitrogen, then the, the power that we use is about one million or perhaps one billion times shorter than the average, well, one million for sure, shorter of the energy needed to smash the deuterium nuclear and to smash the carbon nuclear so that we can produce neutron to make happy academia that because there is no, no, no nuclear fusion without radiation, which is absolutely non nonsense. Of course, there are nuclear fusion with radiation. This is obvious, but it's a question of, of selecting the appropriate. Um, um, in this line, this line, for instance, what we call hadronic, uh, this is a, a, the best result uh, possibility, I should say, of hadronic mechanics. We, um, the, with the fuel that we use, we call it hadronic fuel. Now, deuterium is hadronic fuel. What, what we categorically exclude as hadronic fuel is hydrogen. Why so? Because the fuse hydrogen, we synthesize neutron, and then you have very harmful radiation. So, so the hadronic fuels are selected to be fuel. One which is the best, perhaps from, from an industrial viewpoint, is air. Why so? Because air contains oxygen that can burn conventional source of energy. But in addition, we have proven beyond credible doubt, and we invite everybody to to check it out, and there are verif verification now in progress that uh, oxygen and carbon produce silica. We have stock of uh, silica, in, if you go to my desk, you will see it uh, normally. It's been verified by independent, various independent laboratories. So by using air, we have a multiple source of energy. We have a nuclear synthesis plus, uh, plus the conventional uh, combustion of, of oxygen. The, um, after having said so, uh, I have to alert you that the technology, uh, the, so the, as you will see the, 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 from Professor Kai Wei, Professor Guo, and the, 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 the knowledge, the, the study now theoretically is sufficiently advanced to pass to the industrial level. However, what the, from the industrial level, the, uh, the, I have to alert you that the, the technological difficulties are enormous, are enormous. Is Scott here? Scott, um, uh, not yet, okay. The, so, the, the, and, you know, Enrico Fermi produced the first uh, nuclear pile, at that time it was called La Pila, La Pila di Fermi, the nuclear battery was called, in uh, nuclear fusion in, uh, in 1935 at the University of Chicago. It took 50 years and, and a trillion dollars finally to reach the industrial level 
that what uh, the contemporary in, uh, nuclear nuclear power plant. Um, I think this is much simpler, and uh, however, however, the, the, the I have to alert <laughs> that will take. I don't know whether this industrial level will be achieved during my lifetime. I'm not sure, because the, 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 the engineering problem to be solved are very very substantial. Anyhow, so uh, with this warning um, and, uh, and uh, very quick outline, I, uh, I want to say that everything you have heard in this meeting converges to, nuclear, to our nuclear fusion. That have been, uh, and I have to acknowledge our group from, uh, from China, in particular Professor Kai Wei, Professor Go, Professor da Daxi Li. I'm here, I'm talking about the, this, um, this new fusion thanks to them. Indeed, not only they provide fantastic uh, uh, theoretical uh, assistance, but they provided funds for from China. Nobody from America will give me one penny. China instead had faith and invested, and now China is an integral part of our uh, of our as a due loyalty to good friends, the, the, which is sacred. <laughs> and um, okay, so everything that we did um, is converged to, to this. For instance, <laughs> we have now a public company on Magna Gas. But the, the, with the, the development of Magna Gas as a fuel. But the reason why I the, the developed Magna Gas, this is, was not my objective. My objective was, um, my objective was to, 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 to achieve a technology that will allow the, control, the, will allow the main point, which is the, the controlled exposure of nuclei. Until nuclei are exposed, don't, think of, don't even dream of systematic nuclear fusion. That is why, um, regarding cold fusion, I do believe that they synthesize nuclei. It'd be beyond doubt. Now many, many nuclei have been synthesized with the so-called cold fusion. But I exclude categorically, it is my personal opinion, that, um, that we'll never reach industrial level. Why it is at random? Why it is at random? Because it lacks a systematic industrial me means of exposing the nuclei. Until the nuclear is exposed, look at my, I always say, look at my fingers, the electron um, the clouds, orbital, they touch. If the nuclei will touch each other, there will be an explosion here. So until we systematically expose the nuclei, I, I, I am not interested in nuclear fusion. This is the problem, um, and uh, therefore, when you look at this problem, you see that uh, cold fusion does not have sufficient energy, sufficient energy to do this job. The energy is not enough. You need energy to do this. At the same time, I, am, I'm, uh, I believe that hot fusion does indeed synthesize new nuclear. My God, this is well, well, well known. That's not the issue, but I believe we'll never reach industrial maturity, not in, during my lifetime. Why? Because the, the energy are too much is the other extreme. The energy are too high. And they are being too high, then uh, when, when you activate the, so sure, they contain the, the plasma at the, the beginning. But the moment you activate the, the nuclear fusion, and they do activate the nuclear fusion, there's no question of those powers. My God, this is not the issue. The issue is, however, the stability of the, of the fusion itself. So for a continuous industrial production. That's because we are talking about now art and industrial lab. And uh, uh, the moment that they activate in, um, uh, um, Fusion, uh, 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 fusion, my God, the control, uh, the energy locally, uh, we're talking about um, 20 million degrees. The, 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 pro the, industri the engineering problem of, of contain containing that in, uh, at those enormous energy are prohibitive. That's why in 70 years they have not achieved, they have confirmed the fusion, but they have not achieved the, the contro uh, controlled hot fusion. In conclusion, I exclude both, both extreme. Low fusion and uh, I, am, I mean low temperature and high temperature. I'm not interested in work. I was never interested from day one, and that's the very meaning of the word intermediate, intermediate controlled nuclear fusion, intermediate controlled nuclear fusion without radiation. Why intermediate? Be precisely because the, because the cold fusion is not enough energy. Hot fusions are too many. And the main, a, a fundamental principle, which uh, when you translate it in engineering, engineering, the, the machine becomes very complicated, believe me, and I've done a number of machines in my life, is the, you have to use energy at threshold. In other words, you see, look at this manicure. This is basically the, the what do you need? The nuclear, the, oh, there is another point in which uh, in which I don't believe um, uh, cold, uh, cold fusion could achieve systematic production, is because they ignore completely the spin al alignment of spin. 
is a fundamental law in quantum mechanics that if you have a, a triplet coupling, namely the spins rotate together, then it's like having gears rotating one against the others. You see, when the gears they couple, it, that's singlet. So one rotation up and one rotation down. That's this, that is a stable, stable, uh, stable coupling. If the spin are bought up, then uh, think about gears. They, the gears, they push uh, uh, very strong repulsive forces. So unless you have a systematic, controlled spin coupling, forget about it. I mean, this is, this is, this is, we are physicists. We have to recognize the reality. No matter, sometimes how sad they are. Raoul, <laughs> there was a point in which I did. I felt, guilty, I felt guilty, I felt sorry, but this is our job. The, um, in this case, forget about it. Another point that, uh, that uh, this, uh, ma that, that's the, the, that the importance of the manicure that uh, um, professor, um, um, Ling Yang, is a professor at our institute, as indeed recognized fully, that uh, the importance of the manicure, not only they expose the nuclei, but look at the spin alignment, is now, um, is now axial. So, in other words, the, so his axle, so there is a precisely this, one of the spin alignment to allow, to allow. Now, we produce this systematically. So, this problem after 20, 15 years of work, remember 1998, I, I, I proved this after 1998. Now, this is the result. We are in industrial production. This is the result. So, so look at this. this uh, what do you need? What do we need to achieve a fusion? What do I need? We have to bring those two nuclei at, a, at, a, at, a, at a one Fermi distance. The moment we bring them at one Fermi distance, then the fusion is unavoidable because you activate the nuclear forces. And if you have the right to uh, drawing fuel, you have no, no, no radiation. You cannot have any radiation. So um, starting from magna gas, this is, this is, so we, this is now, on, um, we, can, we control the production in many, many ways. We control it with the power, we control it with the flow, we control it, we control it with the pressure, et cetera, et cetera. We have reached now an industrial uh, control of this configuration. But <laughs> to pass from here to the fusion, that's where the problem becomes big and, and substantial. In, in particular, there is what we call the trigger. There are many, many ways that we are starting the transition from this to the fusion is a trigger, namely a sudden impulse of, uh, of pressure, of, um, of electricity, of other things that eventually will push the nuclei at one Fermi distance after which the fusion is unavoidable. The, the, um, the, the physics underlying, uh, underlying is, is extremely interesting. Forget about quantum mechanics. <laughs> it's laughable if you try to approach those problems with quantum mechanics because you have um, all sorts of uh, forces, all of which are non-Hamiltonian. And um, that's why the, 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 the new structure model of the nuclei with a component of nuclear force of non-Hamiltonian type has been developed because it is most useful to this. That's why nuclei, we have reduced nuclei to a bound state of proton and electron, obeying hadronic mechanics, um, precisely as a foundation to, to, understand, to understand the fusion. Unless we have a realistic, model of nuclei, another recommendation I have for anybody interested in the field, unless you have a realistic model of nuclei, don't do nuclear fusion. You waste your time. You will never make them. In particular, I do not um, accept the contemporary model of nuclei as being bound state of protons and neutrons. In other words, it, well, sure, it's the first approximation. Yes, but the list of things that have not been resolved are enormous beyond what I can... For, the, for you know, even at the deuterium, the proton and neutron bound state do, does not represent the spin one, does not represent the stability of the deuterium, does not represent the, the et cetera, et cetera, in the magnetic moment. I mean, there is a limit in which I can accept it, not because the professor says so, not to me. Don't tell me it's to me. It can be the Nobel Prize in this field. I will, unless I'm convinced, I will not go along. Instead, if you consider the deuterium as a bound state of uh, two protons and then electrons, three particles will give you the spin one. You will get per, um, permanent stability because protons and electrons are uh, the only permanent stable particles that we know. You represent the magnetic moment numerically in an exact way. You are, in other words, you, with, the, with the, um, proton and, uh, two protons and one electron obeying hadronic mechanics, we, at least we represent to totality, totality, of the physical experimental value of the deuterium, at least that. But so that's why I cannot accept 
So, so those notions are fundamental, fundamental for the nuclear fusion that we are talking about because we try to fuse the nuclei together. If we don't know what they are made of, forget about it. <laughs> okay, I don't want to go into too many details. So anyhow, so those are the engineering problems. How to pass from this, uh, how to fuse those two objects together. Once, because this is now, the, so 50% of the job is the, has been resolved at the industrial, industrial level. It's a public company at the NASDAQ doing this. But um, now the, the, how, how, how this is done, we, you, already, you heard about, we, they, they, we do it with an electric arc, and uh, this will give you also stability. You see electric arc polarizes, the, um, polarizes the orbitals in a flat, and then aligns them, you see aligns them. And, uh, and, but, and then we enter the, the, the theory that Professor, well, Professor Kaiwei will describe much better than me. Okay, I want to show a few of the machines that we have done. First, before building the first machine, I spent 20 years just, just theoretical work, study on nuclear physics. And then one day, one day when we felt that we got to all the elements, we built what we call the Dragon, Dragon, Dragon One. This is the Dragon One. And uh, this is what it is. It's a metal, um, metal structure with um, uh, high pressure, as you can see, the schedule is uh, schedule 80. So we'll go to, um, up to a maximum of 300 uh, PSI. We worked at the, for safety at 100. And basically what I, what I did, I, I, had, uh, I had carbon electrodes inside this, uh, carbon electrodes, very, very simple carbon electrodes inside this, uh, this Dragon One. And um, uh, the arc was, pr uh, was powered by an ordinary uh, by M uh, Miller, uh, electric, uh, uh, ordinary weld, ACDC converter, 50 kilowatts. And we filled up, uh, we filled up um, the, the, the carbon was industrial carbon, purity of, is irrelevant. It's not impurity, so what? Only the carbon 12 will participate in the nuclear, nuclear fusion. And this was a, a pure deuterium uh, uh, calibrated to 99.99%. And we ran this, uh, we discovered that we could not run this, uh, this reactor for more than two minutes because at, at the, at, uh, to reach two minutes, the, um, the paint will start scorching systematically. After two minutes, we have to shut down. Then the, the measurements are elementary and beyond credible doubt. If there are doubts, yeah, yeah, some the usual dark side of academia. Why so? Because we take a sample of the gas before the reaction, then after activating for two minutes, we take the sample of the reaction after the activating the arc, and we bring them independent chemical analysis. It, the decrease of the deuterium and the appearance in a measurable amount of the, of the nitrogen is, is, has been systematic and incontrovertible. Careful, however, when you have minimum threshold, if you do this at five kilowatts, you can easily trick this and say, no, it does not exist. I'll tell you how. Yeah, use a little power, and you use a little power, you will not activate the nuclear fusion because there is a threshold. And then you can conclude, no, the nuclear fusion does not exist, but that's corruption. That's corruption because it's a threshold of power. If you use a minimum uh, 30 kilowatt, better 50 kilowatt to be sure. And this has been done systematically many, many times and uh, times over. After, and as I published the first paper in a referee journal in which I'm not the editor, Advances in Physics. After that, I look all, everywhere for, um, for independent verification and I have to express my appreciation to Professor um, Leo Ning and his team. He came, uh, came down, skeptic, very skeptic. I say shoulder is because he's a scientist with this a group of um, uh, associates, and essentially they repeated systematically, systematically the, the measurements, and above all, they did systematic measurement confirming the absence of any radiation, of any uh, radiation at all, whether harmful or not. I knew the deuterium is stable, the, 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 the carbon is stable. The only possibility, only possibility of a synthesis of an, uh, so we start from light, natural, and uh, stable element, and we end up with a light, natural, and stable element, which is the deuterium, which is the nitrogen. So there cannot, either we synthesize the nitrogen, and we produce E, or, or not, or not. There cannot be any radiation whatsoever. This was systematically confirmed, confirmed, and, um, and basically, this is a, after that we pass to the, uh, the construction of the number, number, um, number, the ra dragon number two. Here you can see the administrator, <laughs> my wife Carla, 
in the, the helping us to, the, to, 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 to build these things uh, because the, you know, there are all sorts of administrative aspects that um, I, I needed help. Uh, there is Chris Lynch, our engineer, one of our engineers up here, and this uh, Gene West, the, the author of the, of the, the, the confirmation of the IR. And, uh, and essentially it was vertical because we want to search, uh, see certain geometry. <clears throat> but this was the first reactor that pre produced steam. The, the produced steam. The, however, careful that this team, you know, the industrially, this is virtually very little value. Uh, let me be very, be very, very careful. But at least we produced it of using deuterium as a drawing fuel, and we produce the steam. So, but still, I have to um, see, uh, I'm critical of others because I am very, very critical of my own work. That's why before publishing my things, I, have, uh, I had to pass my, the harshest possible self criticism I have to alert you. This is nice and promising, but does not mean we have industrial, industrial. Means basically we have an excess. We have an excess of heat over, oh, the measurement of the excess is, is elementary. Because the power input is, can be measured without doubt. With a very <laughs> sensitive <coughs> ammeter and uh, voltmeter, you know, you know the power absorber with extreme accuracy. The, the um, heat out is also beyond, uh, can be measured beyond that because all those hadronic reactors, they are measured by independent um, company and they, are, uh, and they, they will state in writing their weight. We know the, the, the mass of the steel and we know the specific heat, so it's very, very easy, elementary to, to calculate the, the, the en uh, energy in and the energy out and the excess is, uh, there is no, no, no over unity, no, no, no space, no ether here, nothing. This is a pure nuclear reaction. So this is diagram number three. Then after that, we pass to, to a little bit more, a more serious machine. And, uh, and this is what we call Dragon 3. It has a double, a double chamber for extracting the heat, one inside and one out. It's much more powerful, will go to 1,000 uh, PSI. But <laughs> when we did, uh, when we did, um, when we did the Dragon 1, when we did the Dragon 1, the, at a certain time, especially when we work with, um, uh, 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 with air, air and um, uh, oxygen, uh, steel becomes combustible to when, uh, when, when oxygen burns at very high temperature. So at one point, I saw the, um, Chris Lynch running <laughs> away, running like a rocket. Because, because the reaction inside was so powerful, it became uncontrolled because of the oxygen combustion, not because of the nuclear. So there was a flame, that's why we call it dragon, because all of a sudden it starts shooting like a flamethrower. It ran away like, like a rocket. So in view of this, in view of this, the dragon number three, ladies and gentlemen, we put it, in, we put it inside a metal container and we stay outside. I will show it to you in a little movie. And um, this dragon number four, uh, Professor Kai, Professor Kao, and actually it may be of interest to you, is, um, is uh, here you can see the, uh, the main reactor, which I will show you, uh, is transparent. The chamber is transparent. There is also a replacement with a metal, metal chamber. And this is a power unit uh, that we have pulsing, pulsing, high voltage pulsing. This, see, let me show it to you in, in, in more detail. This is the dragon four. It's just for, uh, for, um, uh, for, uh, for uh, engineering tests, not for the production of energy. But uh, the important thing is, is, there, is a, there is a glass, uh, glass wall so we can, see the, we can see the arc. Sometimes you, uh, it's difficult to, start to, see, to, see, to know from the outside whether there is an arc inside. So that's what we have. Uh, we have a transparent chamber so that, to do all uh, measuring the physical law, etc. But then it's a low, low pressure. We go to high pressure with the replace. Once we're sure about the arc, then, then we use the metal. We replace it with a metal chamber to, to, for production. But the metal chamber, as a, as a telescope, we see the arc, uh, arc from the top. And, um, and I want to show you the, the power unit. This is the first high voltage policy. Power unit. Before we use an ordinary welder. <laughs> nuclear welder have not been designed for nuclear fusion. Forget about it. Just, so we had to build our own uh, power, power unit. And this is the first and final we managed to have a high voltage, but high voltage pulsing. But this is only, only 500 uh, watts. It's like a bomb. So just for pure, uh, pure um, theoretical research, not for industry. And, uh, that's, as, mm, and that's, essentially, that's essentially it. I want to close by showing you a little movie on the little movie on the on the dragon uh, the dragon uh, three. So at least you see the way we conduct our test. And then I would like to Professor Kai, the is the expert in, on. Um,
Ja, schau, du hast ja richtig voll Screen. My name is Ruggiero Maria Santilli. I am the chief scientist and the president I, I don't of know, no, Josh. I don't know how to have a rich full... Uh, that owns all rights on the new fusions, known as an in, um, intermediate controlled nuclear fusion without any radiation or harm. But there's a, there's the something to click and appears. Also known as intermediate That's okay. it doesn't fusion. Work. And they are it doesn't. known uh, with the nickname of warm fusion. The, um, in this movie, um, we, we shall present the, the essential elements of the third hydronic reactor that was built by High Fuel Inc. thanks to funds from China, specifically from Professor Wei Kai, and very generously supported the construction of this uh, third reactor. In this movie, we shall uh, pre uh, present a, a review of the status of our efforts in the construction of the third hydronic reactor as of today, December 29, 2011. Hi, I'm Chris Lynch. I'm the mechanical design designer for the third hydronic reactor. I designed it in collaboration with Dr. Santelli. certified 6D pipe welder. I worked in collaboration with uh, Chris here from his designs and his uh, blueprints, and I built the hadronic reactor. Uh, my name is Fred Gridley, and uh, I worked in conjunction with Dr. Santilli to design and instrument the uh, electronic Can controls and monitoring equipment for the hydronic reactor. Hi, my name is Michael Rodriguez. I'm the electronic engineer for High Fuels Inc. I made all the electrical connections for the hydronic reactor. My name is Gino Amato. I'm the director of procurement for Gino, High Fuels Inc. I was responsible for procuring all the components necessary to build the hydronic reactor. My name is Katarina Kulinova. I am in charge of bookkeeping of EcoPlanet Inc. who is subcontracting High Fuels Inc. I'm Erin Wally. I am in charge of the logistics for this project. I am Carla Santilli. I am the administrator and the treasurer for iFuel Inc. and EcoPlanet Inc. This is the third hadronic reactor that um, we built for, uh, for the new type of fusion. The preceding two are described in other um, in preceding movie and therefore they will not be treated in this, uh, in this uh, informal movie. This uh, third reactor operates at 1,000 PSI <coughs> and produces steam. Consequently, for our safety, we have placed the reactor inside a metal container so that in, in the event of any loss of, uh, of steam at supercritical super temperature, there, are, there is no injury to any, any of us. But thanks God, so far, we have no leak of any type. The main component of the reactor are, um, are inside, and uh, here on the outside, what we see is the, 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 the control, the, the, all the various controls and recording systems that we will describe them in a moment. Then, um, then we have the, the power unit, which is an Amertec AC-DC converter, which we use at 50 kilowatts. Here we see a compressor that uh, to, man to, uh, to maintain the pressure inside uh, the reactor. And then we have a computer and other, other equipment. We have the current trans transformers. This is disconnected, they're turned off. The current transformers that measure the current on the 480 volt leg. Uh, we have our power light. We have isolated the voltage that feeds the meter and the light so we get a true representation of only the current that is being used by all the equipment in the reactor. For safety, when we have the system energized, we have the light that shows it's energized. Our meter shows the voltage for each leg. This is a very accurate meter that measures our voltage, our current, our KW, uh, all, all the power that is consumed by all the equipment. 
We have several power requirements in the reactor, so we, have, we are distributing the main power from this box. Uh, the 480 volts feeding from this box goes to the Amatec power supply. We also take the feed from this box to this transformer that brings the voltage down to 240 volt three phase. It is followed up and redistributed at lower voltage to the other uh, equipment through this panel. And that feeds the lower voltage equipment plus all of the controls. Everything is wired per the code. And by feeding it through this way, we know that everything that all the power consumed is being recorded by this meter. A very important aspect in the operation of this reactor is control and measurement of the parameters. We have integrated this touchscreen monitor with a control programmable controller so we can monitor and control all the functions of the reactor. We have uh, display icons that can switch on and off via the touchscreen and we have a data logging screen so we can record and view the data real time or scroll back and forth to look at the uh, log data. The log data is also capable of reading written to a USB flash drive for later downloading and viewing and integrating into a spreadsheet. We also have the availability of an ethernet port where you plug your ethernet cable in and you can view real time via the internet the information displayed on the screen or the operating conditions of the reactor. This is a programmable controller that will interpret all of the data signals from our instrumentation and also control the uh, processes. We have the, dual, uh, the power supply to supply power to the uh, transducers. This makes all the decisions. This communicates with the touchscreen via data link. We use the variable frequency drive so we can accurately control the flow rate of the circulation pump and also of the refill pump. And these provide data to the computer so that we can log and record and view the real time uh, flow rates and those are also part of the data screen. These give us uh, very, very, very efficient control of motors. There again, that, all that information is available on this screen and is available for download and these screens can be viewed via the internet. This is the ARC power controller. It controls the uh, position of the electrodes, the ARC intensity, the ARC voltage. It has 22 different parameters that we use to adjust for different hydronic fuels. Uh, the meters here are for monitoring temperatures. We've actually taken a lot of things and put them in here so that everything is all data recorded. We have indicator lights here to indicate power is on, that the electrode is in position, it's in running an automatic, uh, a few warning lights if we have problems with electrodes and whatnot, uh, pump on indicator lights, control switches, emergency stop of course, and this switch which turns the machine on and off. This is the air compressor that we use only when we're using air as a hydronic fuel. It maintains the pressure in the vessel and the air flow through the vessel. This is the hydronic reactor number three, which is located inside the metal container that we have shown before. The, the nuclear fusion occurs in, in, in the interior of this uh, metal chamber as described in a, um, in a moment by, by, by um, Chris Lynch. The, um, we are testing the, this reactor with a variety of, uh, of what we call hydronic fuels, namely fuels that will, uh, they are suitable for, the, for nuclear synthesis of our type 
which is without any harmful radiation. The first hadronic fuel that we use is uh, deuterium because the, 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 we have a fusion between the deuterium and carbon, which if it occurs, can, can only produce nitrogen absolutely without any harmful radiation, particularly in the absolute absence of neutrons and all, neutronic and other um, and a very harmful radiation. Or the fusion does not occur. In this case, there cannot be any, uh, any um, harmful radiation because the power that we use is millions of times short of the, uh, the power and energy needed to smash nuclei so that eventually we produce harmful radiation. Another test that we do, we use for uh, hadronic fuel, air, and, uh, and of course the carbon of the electrodes. We use air because of two reasons. Reason number one, because it will burn with carbon, therefore producing uh, heat without harmful radiation. And secondly, because the oxygen contained in air can produce silica once uh, under, um, under our type of fusion with carbon. Again, either oxygen and carbon fuse together in our technology to produce silica. In this case, there cannot possibly be any harmful radiation whatsoever, none. Or the fusion does not occur. And there is no, uh, there is no uh, possibility of harmful radiation. In the first case, when we use um, uh, deuterium, then the, basically the only byproduct is heat and, uh, and uh, that is, is extracted by a, by, a, by a cooling system based on water. In the second case, please note that the, 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 the hadronic fuels are very simply air and carbon. And, and, and heat is utilized via um, a cooling system based on, on, on a heat exchanger based on water. I repeat, in the second case, the use of air and carbon produce combustion of oxygen, as well as, in addition, the synthesis of silica, therefore producing a substantial amount of clean energy without any harmful radiation. The water, in this case, is used to utilize the, the, and extract the heat from the reactor. Hi, Chris Lynch again. This is the third hydro hydronic reactor, and it consists basically of a high-pressure vessel with water jacket and coils inside and outside the vessel to completely capture as much of the heat generated from it. Uh, the electrodes are controlled by this motor at the end, and that controls the position of the electrodes inside. This is the step-in motor for the completely automated control of the arc. These are the DC power input cables and either gas or air input valves. Pressure transducers and other control equipment. Uh, all the plumbing you see around it is just for the, uh, the water flow. This long beam on the top is to support the flanges when we open the vessel for maintenance and changing electrodes. Uh, as you can see here, these flanges are extremely heavy, thus the heavy beam. The main and most fundamental data for any, um, for any test are two. First, the, the, um, the, the very accurate measurement of the, um, uh, of the used uh, power, which is done by this calibrated uh, um, watt meter and uh, that has been re-verified, certified by the, by the manufacturer, controlled by us. Then, the, then we have to go on the other side of the reactor to, uh, to see how we measure the, um, the power out. I want to indicate the main principle of operation when we use air as hydronic fuel. 
and water as a cooling system. The principle is essentially the following, that, <clears throat> that we have a steady flow of air entering into the reactor and, um, and which acquires very high temperatures, not only because of the arc, but also because of the nuclear fusion. Then um, this air is then mixed with um, the steam produced by the reactor to power a turbine, uh, as, um, as we indicated in, in one of the next um, sections of, uh, of this presentation. So keep in mind that, um, the, the, keep in mind that the, 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 the heating up, in this case of the water in this upper toad, <laughs> is done by both, not only the water that goes, flows through the internal and external jackets, but also by very hot air, which has been mixed with, um, and, and which, is, which comes out of the reactor. The measurement of the um, power output is done as follows. We use um, a, a toad, which is filled up with ordinary tap water, that contains um, um, uh, um, accurately measured volume of ordinary water. We pass this water through the reactor, but through both the internal and the external chamber, and, um, and the water is released back into, into the, into the toad. By, and then we, <clears throat> we measure the, the delta T, namely the initial temperature at uh, the beginning of a test, and then the final test, uh, the temperature at the end. Uh, by having an accurate measurement of the delta T, since we know accurately the, the volume and the weight of the water, we can uh, measure rather accurately the, the energy which has been produced. Keep in mind that not in this case, but in ordinary operation, which you will see in, an, in the next uh, segment of this presentation, when we, when we use the reactor to power a turbine, then the, the air as a primary um, function um, as follows. That air is, uh, is released inside the reactor when we use air as a dronic fuel. Then the air is uh, coming out of the reactor at very high temperature, is mixed with the steam, and brings the, the steam to supercritical uh, temperature, and then the combination of very hot air plus steam is uh, released into turbine to power um, uh, um, an electric generator. To do the energy output measurements, we're keeping it very simple. We have a known volume of water. We're passing it through the vessel, and then right back into the container again and we measure the temperature rise over time of this water and it gives us a direct reading in BTUs. Now, in the process, we have two pumps underneath. We have one flow meter, which measures the flow of the water, the flow rate through it. We have thermal couples measuring the output temperature of the water. Some analog gauges also measuring the water. And another thermal couple measuring the water in the tote. Since we ran this test with air, we had the air flow through the chamber. It comes out this line, and to capture the heat from the uh, hot air, we ran it right into the tank and bubbled it through the water to capture the heat in the water. This is a, uh, a rudimentary steam engine we made to, run, to be run by the hydronic reactor. It, uh, it's no longer in use at the moment because we are using a uh, screw compressor, which is much more efficient. This was an initial test. Today is December the 21st, 2011, and this is a recording of one of the several tests that we do. This shows the, the control room with Fred, our master electronic technician. The uh, want to show now the the view of the, the various controls that are all in automatic recording and computerized for storage. The, this is the control of the arc that you can see the, the, the voltage, the various operation. Also, you can see the, from here the, the amps and the, the amps 
and the voltage to see that the arc is indeed stable. Now I want to show you the, the reactor is inside for safety because it's producing, it's producing a steam. So for our own safety, here is the steam that is producing. And, and you can hear the noise, the noise of the, of the turbine while it's turning under the, under the steam. Attention to the noise of the turbine is going up in uh, high pin RPM. And um, what we use for fuel is air and water. Water that is released into the reactor, however, at, at ambient temperature. We are not yet recirculating the hot water. We just uh, let it go in the steam at this stage. And uh, the, but the final version will require the recirculation of the water so that we, uh, we don't need um, uh, this will be an, uh, an increase on, uh, on the efficiency because now most of the energy is used to heat up, heat up, the, heat up the water all the way to the, from ambient to um, about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a major loss in, uh, in energy. Once we recirculate it, we will bring it back uh, just below the threshold level of, uh, of uh, the boiling. And uh, so the conclusion we can have in this case a dramatic increase, significant increase in the efficiency. Now we are increasing the flow of air. Listen to the noise of the turbine. It goes up in RPM, as well as the increase of the, of the, of the smoke. by just uh, yeah, increasing the flow of hot air and keeping constant the flow of uh, the flow of the steam. Always remember we are operating at one third of the actual pressure and data that uh, are operating uh, for operating this unit. And, uh, This is an example of the electrodes that, uh, of the anode actually, that we have extracted from uh, after a preceding test. And this is the, um, what we call the, the pancake that is mostly silica and carbon as per, uh, as per chemical analysis done by the laboratory of um, gamma technology in Princeton, New Jersey. It is a very solid, as you can see, it's a very solid object. And, uh, and it is uh, high consistency, and you can see the, the visually the, the silica embedded uh, with the carbon, and uh, it's a strange, very strange solid which is created by the reactor that we are now analyzing. We are waiting for chemical analysis for as of today. I believe they will be shipped today or tomorrow from uh, from the laboratory in, in New Jersey. And um, but essentially, this is uh, evidence that we have indeed synthesized silica. And therefore, this is evidence that indeed we, can, we have unlimited energy available, clean and environmentally acceptable without secondary radiation, subject to, well, subject to funds and subject to uh, the resolution of a rather significant number of, um, of, um, of the en te engineering and technological problems, including very advanced power unit of high frequency pulsating, high voltage, including high pressure. This uh, technology should go to 3,000 PSI or 5,000 PSI, not, uh, not only at 1,000, to really to have significant and other technological advances. We have a printout here of the information that was collected on the data monitoring uh, function of the touchscreen monitor. Uh, this information is printed out in a text format that can be brought into any spreadsheet program and formatted. It provides you all the information, your time and date, your temperature uh, of the water in, temperature of the water out, the vessel temperature, all of this information. You can do calculative functions where we can do the volts times the amps to get to DC watts for the electrodes. And it gives all you this information in a usable format that is then uh, able to be stored or manipulated or plotted and graphed from a 
any spreadsheet program. This is it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Unless you have questions, I would like to pass. Do we have any questions for the engineering viewpoint? Please, quickly, because we have to give the floor to Professor Guy. Please, just a moment. What's your estimate of the power out over the uh, power in? Well, definitely it's positive. And um, I, I don't want to appreciate the question, and I respect it. It's a very important question. But um, uh, at this moment, um, I, I want to make the statement, definitely we have more power out okay. than power in. It's unquestionable. Look at the, just the steam. <laughs> And notice that um, I didn't say in the movie we were operating at 300 PSI, not at 1,000 PSI. If we go to 1,000 PSI, that turbine would scream like a siren of a, of a, of a, of a trooper, of a policeman. The, so yes, the, or keep it in a different way. In your <laughs> it's over, over too. Yeah, suppose <laughs> that the nuclear fusion exists, but there's more. Just a combustion of the oxygen alone yeah. will make this, uh, the siren, will make the, the so We do have indeed, um, but I want to avoid the exact number because they have not been published. And, uh, and, um, and um, I don't want to throw numbers, but, uh, but we do have power, oh yes. But I have to also clarify, we do not have power, we cannot, um, since the, 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 um, the turbine is very inefficient, we're talking about 18, 15, 14% efficiency, we have not uh, achieved uh, the, the uh, power output <laughs> suitable to produce uh, electricity in an electric generator more than the electricity that we have used. No. This is what we are working now. Oh, we can produce a water heater, yes. An industrial <laughs> water heater, yes, we can uh -huh. now. But we, have not we do not produce, uh, even two, we, we, the principal can. As I mentioned to you, we do high pressure, then the, and then, then the, um, it will be definitely more. Just by using combustion of oxygen alone, we can do that. So, but, 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 it needs a million dollars, because then you have to go to, um, to 3,000 uh, PSI. 3,000 PSI, just the welding alone cost, uh, there have been a quotation, the welding alone around $450,000, just uh, because they have to be X-rated, and, and et cetera, et cetera, just the, 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 let alone the, the controls. So without money. <laughs> And now, at this moment, we, we, we have funds, but limited, very limited funds. Any other question, please? At, at this moment, uh, the coefficient of, perform of performance, COP, uh, at which level it is estimated to be? And this is the same question by Professor Violet, um, namely, namely, the... the um, we definitely we produce more, uh, more, but uh, but with the equipment that we have, we can even do we could, but with, um, for the principle, you will see Professor Kai Wei lecture and then Professor Leon Ying, we can. But at this moment, we have to face reality. This is reality. The reality at this moment is that we do not produce sufficient. Uh, power out to produce sufficient energy more than the, uh, in other words, we do not have an, a new ele uh, radiation-free electric power plant. This is the objective to achieve. Think about Japan, what happened in Japan, Ukraine, what happened in Ukraine. And uh, I think we do have that potential, but, uh, but we, have to, uh, we have to build the new machines to achieve that, uh, that uh, to have power more than the produce electricity, but because of the inefficiency of the generator, 14%. So uh, you produce a lot out, <laughs> but then uh, when you convert it to electricity, you lose 80% uh, of it. <laughs> also, However, sorry, also the um, containing heat is very, it displays in an incredible way. So basically we, ca we count that 50% of the heat produced is lost. So the 14% efficiency is count out of the 50% of the heat produced, because 50% is gone in, uh, in uh, dissipation. So when you look at all this, you have to produce in, in numbers, you have to produce a minimum of 40 times, 40 to 50 times the, um, the, 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 the energy out of the energy in mm. so that you can start um, achieving the main objective of the, all those efforts is again, again, a fundamentally new radiation-free electric power plant. It's possible. There's no question about it. I would not be here otherwise. 
but it takes money to... But, but already there, are, there is an evidence that uh, the output in any form is bigger than Oh, no, the beyond issues. credible doubt, if the doubts are political. The, uh, I estimate the, okay, if you use 90, 90 kilowatt, you can heat one bottle, two liter of uh, water in one minute from the, from the cool water becomes steam. If you use 30, that's uh, you only can in one minute you can win, win, uh, less than one liter. So if you can see this, you have an idea uh, what's the input of, of the, 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 in this machine usually use 30 kilowatt. Uh, maximum things is 90 watt. Then you can see the, the steam out. Although we, we need to uh, measure very carefully you uh, big tank to the, uh, you can image image the what the steam out is is only two, one minute to two liter. That, that's that's the concept. Uh, prof <laughs> Professor Santilli. Um, I have a question. I'm, I'm sorry. So. I'm so <laughs> Your uh, fusion is occurring in a spark that's jumping across the, the electrodes in the ah, chamber, ah, right? Ah, ah, that is, uh, is not authorized uh, to enter into too many details. Oh, okay. That I, uh, the, sorry, I apologize. But you said that. earlier that you uh, generated a magnetic field from the current, which would be an arc, supposedly. I think you said arc. Well, that, that is to create the, um, to, um, to, uh, to control the orbitals, without which the any fusion is a dream to control systematically the orbital and uh, con um, create the alignments. The fusion is, uh, the diffusion process is, um, in our words, magnetic gas technology is the, the, is the technology that creates, all, uh, but the, there is no fusion whatsoever, none. The energies are not enough. And that is based on the arc. On an arc alone. So you create the heat and the uh, magnetic field at the same time. Yes, there are several processes. There is a very complex uh, situation, and uh, the, because there is, every aspect has to be controlled to achieve a really controlled fusion. Mm -hmm. the, the polarization of the orbitals got to be controlled, and in the amount controlled, the alignment of the spin has to be controlled, and etc. Uh, etc. etc. Et and then. This is important because then um, you can disrupt uh, the, the fusion instantaneously by, by in many, many different ways. Mm. By, the, by the control of the, the um, polarization of the orbit and stop that, uh, you get the atoms become spherical and <laughs> forget about any fusion. Which is but an I advantage. Mean, uh, sorry? It's an advantage for safety. Yes, exactly. The, unlike a the, nuclear reactor. Yes, uh, that's why we have many, many, many. But um, also, however, there is one point that this fusion cannot be explosive. That's why I work next to it. And uh, it cannot be explosive because it's localized in a very small area by conception. We mm. could conceive it in an explosive form, but I would never work on it. Mm. But this is, um, since it is localized, uh, it will never reach the level of an explosion, never. This has been proven with calculations and uh, very, very clear calculation. Mm. But thanks for your question, but I, I apologize. There are things I cannot disclose. Please. Professor Santin, are you going to let the professor try to give the talk? Yes, but these are question, engineering questions. And then Professor Kai is now the, the, the well, well, last question. Faster, That's okay, don't worry, we are among friends. This is very important. I think you should control the No, 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 no. I am the chairman. No, no, you have a full. No, no, this is informal. This is very important for all of us, as well as for society. We don't look at the watch. Anybody? No, no, Professor Kai, you will have a full, uh, full time and you will have a full, uh, full question. We have to debate these things. Now, this is the, at the engineering level. So, uh, 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 please help me, Professor Kai, yes. I would like... Uh, you don't speak loud enough. Oh, okay. Hear it. I would like that you uh, say some, words, uh, some details about silicon carbon transformation that you show in your picture. Professor Ying will mention that, yes. Other question? Other question, please? Okay. 